Hi there, welcome back to the Virtual Massage Clinic. My name is Michelle and I'm so happy you're here. Today we're gonna to be talking about telehealth in the massage therapy industry and how we can use it to benefit us. And I'm gonna give you about five or six different reasons how you can use this and why you should be using it. So stay tuned for all of those. Before we dive in, if you're new to this channel, I am a former registered massage therapist from Toronto, Canada, so I'm technically retired. I'm currently living in the States um, doing this and I divide my time between the States and at the present Latin America as well, where I do humanitarian work and offer my signature 80 hour massage training program, which you can learn about in this video. So today I want to talk about telehealth because I think this is a upwards trend we're seeing in the, in the healthcare industry as a whole. And massage therapists are probably amongst the second wave of people that are going to be using it, but I assure you it will be a really big thing in our industry. Let's just start with a little story about Coronavirus. During coronavirus, we have all become pretty comfortable on camera. We've all had a lot of Zoom sessions and doctors have kind of capitalized on this, you know, face-to-face -face opportunity and interaction by moving into telehealth. And the way doctors are using telehealth right now is by doing anything that they can face to face on camera. So doctors are using programs like Zoom Health. There's a whole slew of HIPAA compliant online platforms that allow you to have a conversation with your patient or your client. And the benefit it's serving doctors at present is that they don't have to remask, um, re-glove, um, so that there's a lot of COVID benefits there, but it's also returning them a higher volume of patients. So a lot of doctors actually saw a dip in their patients coming through the doors during COVID. And now they're seeing those numbers come back up again because they're able to do telehealth consults. Th this is totally HIPAA compliant. So why aren't we doing this as massage therapists? Now, before you go, she's crazy. Let me tell you, I understand. I understand that we cannot do a whole lot um, like this on camera with our client. We cannot substitute camera for hands-on range of motion, postural assessments, orthopedic testments, assessments, the actual massage practice we can't do like this. But here's what we can do over the camera. Number one, you can, you can and should complete your intake interview on here. Let's say you assign five to 15 minutes for your initial intake with any new client, especially if you're in a therapeutic setting, medical setting, um, car accidents, MBAs, all that. That five to 10 to 15 minutes that you spend in a treatment room, you could spend like this. So you're minimizing your risk of contracting coronavirus. That's number one. That's a huge, huge plus of doing this. Number two, if you do a face-to-face -face consult with your client, you can still bundle it price-wise into your hour package. Just take it off, give them a 45 minute treatment in person, give them a 15 minute initial intake on camera. So what you would do in that situation is schedule your telehealth consult maybe a day before you meet with them face to face. And so here's benefit number two, as a practitioner, it means that you have that much more time to process and think about what you want your treatment to be. Now I know some of you are gonna say this is cheating, but honestly, like we're in the business of giving our clients and patients the best treatment possible. And how many times have you had a client where you say, oh, if only I had like a little bit more time to process that. There's a lot of things that we're taking in a mile a minute about our client. And a lot of the time, I don't know about you, but my second treatment will be better than my first because I've had a little bit of time to really sink my teeth into what my clinical impression is. The third benefit is massive. So if you, regardless of whether you are female or male, sexual solicitations do occur in our industry and it's a huge topic, a huge discussion. But get this, imagine if you do a five to 10, 15 minute interview with your client on screen first, this number one allows you to flag potential sexual solicitations. And number two, it will significantly decrease the chances of anyone dreaming of making a sexual advance. 
It sets a boundary. It means that you can, with your client's consent, record your intake. So if they were to uh, sexually solicit you or if anything inappropriate were to happen, you already have them recorded on camera. Hear me loud and clear. You're never ever gonna record the massage treatment session. But all you need is that five to 15 minute initial intake with them on camera. And this goes to protect a lot of therapists. Think about, I had a, I had a conversation with a new grad a couple weeks ago and um, he's practicing down in Texas. I know if you're watching this, you know who you are. And my heart really went out to him because he's a new male therapist. And he said, well, I'm not going to treat women unless I know them or I have a referral for them. And I said, you know, you're, you're kind of shooting yourself in your foot in, in your foot because it's you're not stacking the cards up in your favor. So we talked about this and we realized that if he were to go the telehealth option and pre-screen his female clients that he's worried may, you know, um, get him into a, some sort of f f false sexual allegation, problem solved. If you are recording your initial intake interview with your client, you have a baseline always to fall back on. It's sort of like range of motion testing. If you're in Canada, you measure the degrees. If you're in the States, you're measuring uh, something like mild, medium, uh, moderate, and extreme. But when you have a baseline for your results, you always have that as a basis of comparison. So the same way we record the results of our um, assessments, having a formalized intake interview results, something that's not handwritten, can actually be very, very valuable. It gives you something to fall back in the future as a metric, something tangible to, to say, okay, we started here and we've made this much progress. If you are as convinced as I am that telehealth and uh, online client intake interviews is the way of the future, there's a couple things you need to know. So the first one being pricing structure. I discussed this briefly in my first point, basically figure out whether you're going to charge separately or bill it with the cost of your treatment. My personal recommendation would be, you know, and your time is your time, right? I don't think anyone should ever devalue themselves. So if your um, hour session, let's say is $100 and your initial intake interview takes 10 minutes, then when they come in for that hands-on treatment, give them 50 minutes of time. Some people I know are out there are gonna give this time away for free because they may say it serves them as therapists more than the client totally up to your professional judgment. The next thing you'll have to decide if you're going down this route is what platform you want to use. So make sure it is HIPAA compliant. Make sure that um, you're not using something like a regular Zoom or WhatsApp because a lot of these softwares do actually fish for information and you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. I will do a little bit of research about some HIPAA compliant software and put a link below. Um, I don't think there's any affiliate links. If there are, I'll let you know. The third thing you'll need to know to safeguard yourself is just check in with your governing body. So whether you're licensed in um, a state of America or a province in Canada or elsewhere in the world, please make sure you do your due diligence and check to make sure that you're clear to do this. And the fourth thing you need to know if you move forward is to uh, script what your consent spiel is gonna look like and make sure that the client is informed. I will draft a consent spiel and I'll put it below. Uh, it will just be one or two sentences to make sure that you have informed consent from your client, both to move forward with the video screening, but also to record it. And the last thing you need to know is that you and your client both need to have privacy to conduct these online interactions. So you need to be in a private spot where um, the client's privacy is not compromised. So you may still need to go into your um, clinic to conduct these intakes and your client, well, if they compromise their confidentiality and privacy, that's totally their choice. But as a ethical healthcare provider, I would definitely recommend you let them know um, the risks and benefits of finding a solid place of solitude to chat with you in. What telehealth is not going to be good for is any kind of uh, postural. I personally would never ever use video at this point in time with our current technology. Uh, range of motion, orthopedic assessments, obviously the hands-on you can't, but 
I highly recommend adapting this new technology to your practice and I hope it goes well for you. If you have experience in doing this, please drop a, a line below, share with everyone watching this how it's gone for you. And if you have questions, also drop them below because I love to create a follow-up video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna drop a link below to our Facebook group, Massage Students, and that's where we have conversations just like this on the daily, Monday to Friday. For more information about sexual solicitations and how to avoid them, please check out my colleague, Joyce. She's the founder of the Respect Massage Movement, respectmassage.com. I am so grateful to have you here and I'll see you in the next one.